To be well prepared for military operations, not only do you need well-trained troops, but also advanced equipment and reliable intelligence. Communication technology is used to support troops with vital information using onboard state-of-the-art sensors and data links. Superior situation awareness is the key to success. In the past, scouts are dispatched to gather information. Today, long-range sensors and equipment transmit real-time information and distribute current awareness to all units. This network-centric warfare is an infrastructure that provides all elements of warfighting enterprise with access to high-quality information services. To receive high-quality information, armed forces must develop a robust communication network that provides the sharing of transmission facilities among a number of devices, including computers, terminals, as well as telephones. In Singapore, the Army, Navy and Air Force utilizes technology as force multipliers, especially in the area of C4I integration, command, control, communications, computers and intelligence. Coordinated attacks and support for various units and forces is achieved with the use of advanced data links and networks. An example is the Battle Management System, BMS, used by the Singapore Armed Forces. Let's take a look at how SAF employs BMS during exercise forging Sabre, where the latest sensors, weapons and digitized warfare tactics were tested. The headquarters deploys an unmanned aerial vehicle to survey the vicinity. Live images captured are relayed back to HQ by microwave data link. When the HQ detects enemy forces, commanders will order the ground troops to track enemy movement. A kill box is identified for the integrated strike to take place. The Apache helicopters are activated. The lead Apache detects the target using its radar system and relays the information to the other Apaches and HQ. HQ orders commencement of the integrated strike. The lead Apache designates the targets to the artillery guns. The F-16s are activated for an airstrike. They are laser-guided bombs home into the targets designated by the ground troops. The Apaches fire their missiles before moving closer to take out the remaining targets with their rockets and guns. Traditionally, within a fighting unit, Communication must be provided among a number of stations or fight platforms, each of which require a communication path to many of the other stations at various times. Using a fully connected or mesh topology for analysis, it is evident that full duplex operation require n-1 input-output ports and a total of n times n-1 divided by two full duplex links if there are n number of stations. The cost of providing links between any pair of stations grows at n square, and thus makes such a system impractical for a large value of n. As such, the SAF employs the concept of subnet to minimize the number of ports and links required. The subnet consists of an interconnected number of intermediate message processors, IMPs, which can be found in the battle management system. These IMPs have the capability of attaching to more than one station and routes data through the subnet. In this way, each fighting station only requires a single I.O. port, resulting in an efficient military communication network. In an integrated battlefield system, the headquarter acts as a central node to receive information from multiple fighting platforms which may come from multiple sources and in the form of different modulated signals. The evolution of the software-defined radio brought about this ability for HQ to communicate with multiple platforms at the same time. We shall take a look at how this technology has evolved over time. A software-defined radio is a radio communication system which can tune to any frequency band 
and receive any modulation across a large frequency spectrum by means of a programmable hardware which is controlled by the software. Messages sent for military communications are referred to as signals. Radio communications date back to the 1800s and digital radios were introduced in the mid-1990s. Digital radio communications paved the way for SDR. Military communications, as it pertains to avionics, has evolved to allow for lighter radios that have more functions. SDR technology was developed specifically to improve military aircraft communications. Usually, aircrafts carry one UHF radio and one VHF radio, but there were no indicators if the radios were not functioning. Old radios had preset frequencies, or the user had to manually dial the frequency on the frequency selector. The preset channels could only be changed by the maintenance crew on the ground. Radio became software-defined in the late 1970s. The device had to receive an analog signal, convert it to a digital one, process the signals, and convert it back to analog in as few steps as possible. The ideal SDR had to change its functionality without any hardware change. Today, computers use the OSI 7 layer model, where each layer is self-contained and the tasks assigned to each layer are implemented independently. The physical layer in a SDR includes the radio hardware as well as the interfaces to the software. The software is contained at the lowest layers. One of the main benefits from SDR is the reduction of size and weight. An SDR was able to emulate more than 10 existing radios for different functions. The software performs many of the functions autonomously. SDR has evolved over the years for use in the military outside avionics. Some users include IFF, Identification Friend or Foe, which uses a protocol contained in the transmission to determine whether a contact is enemy or ally, and TTNT, Tactical Targeting Network Technology, which is a network that supports the goal of locating identifying, targeting, and attacking enemy targets anywhere at any time, which are all used by the battle management system in the headquarters. Computers' influence in radios in the form of the SDR greatly advanced military aircraft communication. The benefits are also being seen in the commercial industry in the form of wireless products such as cell phones. Eventually, there can exist a single hardware configuration for all SDR units contained in every military fighting platform. This concept applies to the commercial industry as well. Cell phone users will no longer have to be concerned with which network their phone is compatible with. The military is spearheading the communications revolution, developing sophisticated systems that are faster, cheaper and more flexible. However, as communication options multiply, so does the problem of getting disparate technologies to work together efficiently and securely. Communications integration is now one of the top challenges facing military technology leaders. Smartphones and other internet protocol technologies are exciting, yet they also pose challenges in terms of interoperability and security. Even though these challenges have yet to be solved, one can always look at the past successes in military communications to gain inspiration in engineering a more flexible and secure communication system in the future.